Deepika, welcome to Bollywood Life. Thank you. First of all, tell me how sweet is the taste of this Padmavat success? You know, success is always very, very sweet, but this is beyond that, I feel. This film is seeing uh, a different kind of uh, high, um, which I don't think Indian cinema has seen in a very, very long time. You know, so I wouldn't attribute this film to just, of course, it's, you know, it's, it's seeing amazing success at the box office. It's seeing uh, so much love and appreciation. Um, you know, uh, everyone's work is being appreciated. But um, I think post this film, I'm feeling a completely different kind of high. Um, and there is a sense of people uh, sending a lot of blessings, you know, it's, it's, it's almost feeling like a spiritual sort of experience the last right. couple of days. Right. Deepika, you have worked really hard to, you know, come where you have. We, all of us look at you on screen and we enjoy your performances. There is so much of recognition in the film reviews and there are awards decking up your house. But a lot of people forget the fact that it didn't come easy. You know, there were auditions and there was obviously your first film which was a blockbuster. It has been a very up and, an uphill and a downhill journey. What has been the one most, one, of, one biggest sacrifice, if I had to ask you, that you've made throughout and the biggest lesson you've learned of the journey? Well, if you ask me one uh, sacrifice, I think that's very, very, uh, you know, easy to answer that question, uh, is the fact that I moved away from home and not to say that, you know, there are so many youngsters today uh, who move away from their home at a very, very young age to pursue their dreams. And I'm sure it is for them as well. But if I had to choose for myself, uh, you know, I would definitely say the fact that I moved away from my home, um, you know, that I don't get to wake up every morning and see my parents' face or my sister's face, to not be a part of their life uh, every single day. Um, when I was, uh, you know, when I was in my teens, um, all I wanted to do was to just get out and uh, pursue my dreams, um, not realizing at that point that it actually means so much more. Um, and today I've understood the decision that I made more than 10 years ago. Uh, I understand today what a big decision that was, you know. So there are days where I wake up and I feel like, or you know, you know, sometimes you come back from a tiring day and you just want your mother to give you some like hot food sure. or just someone to sit and talk to you sure. or in stressful times, your father to talk to you or, you know, so it's, uh, that's, that's probably what I, you know, what I miss and I, I would call a sacrifice. In every other way, I think it was expected, you know, I think the fact that I was also an athlete has taught me the importance, uh, you know, my father says the, the three Ds, uh, discipline, dedication and determination. Um, I knew this very, very early on in my life and I've used a lot of that in, in my film career as well. And then of course, like you said, the ups and downs uh, of, of the career, but also of the fact that uh, people didn't really appreciate the work that I did initially. Um, even though I feel like I had one of the best debuts that any female has ever had, a lot of people questioned my performance. And uh, I think all of that has made me the person that I am today. You know, I think I took all of that criticism and even today, if there's any criticism sure. that comes my way, I always try and take it in, you know, in a positive way and try and, you know, always do better than, than what I have done in the past. Right. Uh, how do you react to this, uh, you know, uh, this quote when somebody says that she has become Sanjali Bansali's muse and he is obsessed with her on a, to a different level in terms of the way he portrays you on yeah. screen. A lot of actors and actresses would definitely be jealous. The, the way, the canvas that he gives you is beautiful. It's not just the color and texture. What do you make of that? I think that uh, the relationship that he and I share uh, is very, very different from the relationship that I share with some of my other directors. The relationship I share with him has evolved a lot since uh, our first film together, Ram Leela. We've never really had much conversation sure. in, in our relationship and it's reduced a lot more uh, over the years. Uh, the communication we share is through the eyes and in our smiles. 
um, you know, when I think of him, I think of days when I walk on to set and he's sitting by the monitor. I just give him a big hug and we are in this embrace where I think we're both communicating so much to each other without sharing a word and we know exactly what the other one is trying to communicate or feeling and even on set there are no um, he's never really directed me right. he's always just let me let me be his sure. you know and i think that that means there's just immense amount of trust and i you know i'd like to believe that the connection that we have is is a soul connection you spoke about eyes and you have beautifully used uh, your eyes in the film. There are so many scenes and there are so many moments. Everybody's talked about the climax and the Johar, but apart from that, there are moments when you're just standing and you're still, but those eyes say more than the dialogues and the lines could possibly could. Uh, in all the films that you've worked with him, which was the most emotionally draining scene, if I have to ask you, if you can go back in a, in a second and just say, on set maybe? Out of all the three films that I've done with him, uh, I would say the Johar uh, sequence, the Johar scene, the climax of Padmavati is, um, has been the most um, emotionally challenging few moments sure. for me um, as an actor. And, um, you know, like you rightly pointed out, with Leela, I was a very feisty, fiery sort of character who could yell and scream and fight and punch uh, and break down. With Mastani, again, she was a warrior, uh, but she was a warrior princess. So I still had the option of, okay, she's a princess, but she was still a warrior. She sure. still went to the battlefield with a sword in her hand. You know, when she felt rage or when she felt like she needed to win a war, she could physically just go herself and, right. you know, be a part of the process. This for me has been the most challenging because there were no crutches in that sense. Um, she's a queen over here and, uh, you know, there are moments where she, you know, especially in the second half, she kind of holds fort right. uh, when he's abducted, when her husband is abducted, to sort of be the pillar of strength, to be the woman that everyone is looking up to. You know, as a leader, I would think that you you need to inspire the people around you. So even if she had moments of weakness, uh, you know, it was all more internalized than, uh, you know, the experience of um, externalizing emotions, which I think, you know, I found quite challenging at, uh, at times. But I think for me, the Johar sequence was the most challenging because there's not a single line or word or dialogue, but yet to have to express an emote. But it was also a lot of fun. You know, as, as an actor, that's what you look forward to. You look forward to those challenges. I know Sanjay sir had many moments where um, we were on that set and we shot this in peak summer of uh, in Mumbai and he kind of would keep delaying this Johar sequence mm -hmm. because we know uh, what an important moment it was in, you know, uh, for, for the film. And, you know, he would keep kind of, you know, Going trying to... Forth. Yeah, ki nahi, aaj gana karenge, aaj wo wala scene hai, aaj wo kuch, dusra kuch shot karenge. So there were, I think as a director also, because we knew that it was going to be emotionally very, very, very draining. Sure. Uh, but you know, then that came that point where that was literally just the last thing that was left to do mm. on that scene, right. uh, on that set. So we, you know, and then we had no option. That day came when right. we had to approach that, right. that scene. And there was this eerie silence because, uh, you know, to recreate something that m might have happened, but to just imagine what uh, people in, in that era have gone through or have experienced. But she does it with so much uh, power mm -hmm. and strength and dignity. You know, it was, it was just, you know, a great... Uh, moment for me as an actor to to have experienced those moments and the johar scene does it goes beyond leaving a lasting impression on your mind when you walk out of the, out of the theater that is the one thing that stays with you but the next morning when you wake up you still can't get those images out of your head you know you leading that whole pack of women who are just sacrificing their lives for the glory and pride of the rajput clan at the same time that particular scene has become a huge topic of debate there are polarizing views on that uh, the, the fact that Sanjay has shot it so beautifully and glorified it 
and not understood the pain that those women went through. Um, when you shot this particular scene, was that ever a topic of conversation uh, in terms of just sitting across the table and asking him that maybe this could also be seen in this particular light or obviously that is completely Sanjay's vision and you go with it? I don't think he and I looked, uh, looked at it uh, purely just from the act itself. I mean, of course, if you, if you isolate the poetry from it and you, you think of just the act itself, uh, it's beyond brutal. Right. You know, and nobody would endorse it sure. today. No sane person would endorse it today. But unfortunately, it is a ritual that was practiced in the era of when the film is set. It is, it is what it is. But at that moment, um, I would say for the for the kind of person that I am, um, it was beyond just the act itself. For me, it was a victory for her in so many different ways. Uh, her strength and her power came out in those moments. Um, her leadership qualities came out in those moments. You know, if you look at it another way, uh, it is it is an act that she chose to commit herself. Uh, but it was also a way for their souls to unite. Sure. You know, so there's so many other ways of looking at it, barring, um, you know, the just the act itself. Um, nobody's endorsing Johar today. Uh, but a film, a scene in a film, I think has to be viewed in uh, in sort of totality, and you know, in for the for the time that, uh, you know, for the time in which the the film was set. You know, we watch movies like 300 and Troy and, uh, you know, Gladiator. Sure. And you watch a lot of these films. And um, I can't think of anyone who's pulled a scene out of context and questioned it. You accept a film for what it is because it is set in a particular uh, era. What has been the one compliment or one reaction that you have got? That you must have, your phone must have been flooded, obviously. And I know how much each compliment and each reaction means to you because you've put so much into it. What is the one thing that somebody has sent, whether it's a text or a call, that has stayed with you? And I think from, uh, from people saying that, um, you know, you've immortalized the character to uh, nobody else could have played Padmavati. I mean, there have been all, all sorts of compliments, but you know, you, you might have seen um, the fact that um, Javed Sahab mentioned that um, he, he felt like it was, you know, a very, you know, a defining moment in my career and right. sort of called it my, uh, not sort of, he did call it my mother India. Um, I think that's somewhere that really stayed with me. You know, it might not be, but the sure. fact that he thought of it um, with with that sort of, you know, he he viewed it like that. Right. You know, for me, that's a huge compliment. Right, right. Uh, in in our chat with Ranveer, we asked him what is his favorite film of yours, and he said it's not Bajirao Mastani, it's not Padmavati, it's not Ram Leela. Any guesses what film he picked? Piku. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if I had to ask you the same question for him, what would what would the answer be? My favorite film of his. Yes. I think his work in Lutera didn't get its due. I agree. Uh, you know, maybe that's not the person we know him to be, uh, or at least that's not what he projects. Um, and I feel maybe his slightly more energetic performances are the ones that obviously get more easily noticed. Mm. But I feel like his work in Lutera was just, it was just subtle and very, very fine performance. Okay. My last question to you is the film is up. It's already out for release. It's doing enormously well at the box office. At the same time, people are watching it over and over again. You're right now in the middle of so many interactions. Um, have you let go? Or are you still holding on? And what's the process like for you? I mean, uh, I would say kind of in between because of course the film has released, but we have another big weekend coming up. Uh, you clearly are not going to let go of the film so easily. No. I don't think the film is going to let go of okay. me that, <laughs> that easily. You know, there's, I don't think this is the time to rest. I think this is, although, yes, there is a sense of relief in terms of the fact that the film has released, it's come out. Um, but I feel like it's, I, I feel like I'm not done yet. I feel like uh, there's still a, a, some way to go. Um, you know, there's another, like I said, there's a big weekend coming up. And uh, just in terms of the, uh, 
the adulation and the blessings has been slightly overwhelming so i think that will sort of take some time so on that note we would like to say that let's here's to seeing more of you on the big screen here's to see more of you smiling <laughs> off screen and all the very best thank you thank Thanks. you